Okay, so good everyone, welcome back to another Bush Creek fly tying video. In this video, I'm tying up this, which is my fuzzle bug. So the uh, this, I found this bug to be this particular fly to be really useful, um, particularly if there's a lot of dragonfly larva um, in the water. Um, I think it gets taken as dragonfly larva more than anything else. It's uh, it's a really simple fly to tie, and uh, the idea from this fly came from an Australian fly tire, the late Murray Wilson, who developed this technique called fuzzling. And um, what Murray would do, would, would, would take chenille and he would dub directly onto the chenille, uh, a lot of dubbing, wrap up the chenille onto the body and then brush the dubbing out. And the idea behind uh, the concept of fuzzling was that the dubbing would this thin halo, if you like, of dubbing would create the illusion of a body, but you could see through it or see into it, particularly when it's wet. So uh, what I've done is I've taken this technique that, that Murray's come up with, and, and this is why the bug's called a fuzzle bug, in honour of Murray, um, and, and created a, a nymph-style bug for this. Pretty straightforward to tie. So the hook itself is just a jig hook. I generally tie these in 14s. Um, in any particular brand of hook that you prefer. Um, beads, tungsten slotted bead. In, uh, now, I do it in nickel or black, nickel or nickel black. Um, you could probably do it in other colours, but I haven't really found anything to be better, worse or better than the other one. So I just tie these straight up in black. The, uh, the thread itself, you want something strong and fine. So I'm, I use Semperfly Nano Silk. The body is made up of straggle string. So semper fly straggle string, we're doing semper fly all round on this one. Uh, semper fly straggle string. In this particular fly I'm using uh, insect green. Um, I do it in dark brown and I do it in a beige and I just use a corresponding straggle string color to the type, to the color of the fly that I want to tie. The, uh, the dubbing itself, I'm using semper fly uh, super fine dubbing in green riker. Um, and, and I found that the Semperfly super fine dubbing is, is really good for doing this pattern. Um, you can do it with natural dubbing materials, but um, I don't think you get quite the same effect um, as, as synthetic dubbing materials. And the super fine uh, tends to work really, really well. So to prep the super fine, all I do is take a, a fair bit. Now you're going to use a fair bit when you, when you tie these flies. Um, but you brush it all out and then I just sort of pull it apart, tease it apart um, just to sort of shorten the fibres because they can be a little bit long. So just tease that around a bit. And that's all there is to it, Semperfly all around. And um, if you're in Australia you can get all this, the Semperfly string, the thread and the dubbing from uh, from Jim down at Five Finds down in Lilydale. So, uh, so if you're interested in trying it, then you can give Jim a ring. So all I've done here is captured in the thread, tie it on, lock it down. I'm going to come back to the bead a few turns to make sure it doesn't lock. And then I'm just going to take a length of the straggle string, catch that in directly behind the bead, and then lock that down, all the way down to the bend. Once there, bring it all the way back, and then I'm gonna do a couple of turns right behind the bead just to hold the thread, stop it bouncing around while I do the rest of the fly. So the body of the fly is the straggle string, and we're gonna use the fuzzling technique, and we're gonna dub straight onto the straggle string. Now, you wanna, you're going to brush this out, so um, you wanna be generous with it. You can't be too, can't be too sparing with the dubbing because if you are, you don't get the same effect. It tends to be too wispy and you end up brushing most of the dubbing out. So you wanna be generous so that you've got plenty of dubbing to work with when you start brushing. About an inch, inch and a half of dubbing, fairly dubbed, fairly heavily, as you can see there. And then all I'm gonna do is just wrap that straggle string up in more or less touching turns over the top of the dubbing, capturing it all in tighten up there and just bring that straggle string all the way forward 
right up to behind the bead. Once I'm in behind the bead, I'm going to come over with a couple of turns to lock it at the front, and then I can trim away the surplus straggle string. From here, I'm just going to do a quick whip finish directly behind the bead so that it doesn't bounce around or the thread doesn't bounce off while I brush this out. So the brushing itself is, you want to be pretty sort of, I'm not so much aggressive, but you want to be vigorous with it. Um, the idea here is to brush the dubbing out and thin it right down and then also have an, the, the fibres and the straggle string um, pick out as well. So to do that, I use um, a wire brush and really what I do is I just come in and sort of rub it up, if you like, um, encourage that dubbing to come out and sort of brushing it backwards as I go. So that's to start with. And then I, as, I, as I'm dubbing, I'm just pinching away that excess material and put it to the side because you can reuse that. And, um, and just continue picking this dubbing out and trying to pick out those straggle string fibres as well and uh, untrap those as we go. Now, you, don't, you want to keep the fibres fairly short in the sense that you don't want it to come too far back, uh, back behind the bead, uh, sorry, the, behind the hook. You, you know, you're sort of really not trying to try, tie a streamer here. You're tying a, um, a nymph fly, so you know, keep things relatively short and tidy. But that's the sort of effect you're after here. You can, you know, something that's starting to wisp up a bit. The dubbing itself is thinning out and you can start to see through the dubbing to the uh, straggle string underneath. And you get some of the straggle string fibres that, uh, that come out and play and you get those little glints and UV going on as well. And that's, that's what you're after. So once I'm sort of relatively comfortable or happy that with the, the makeup of that, what I'm going to do is add a little hair collar behind the, the bead. And I'm just going to use squirrel here. And because I'm doing a green fly, I usually use a corresponding colored uh, fur or hair. So I'm just going to try and split this thread when it wants to play the game. And pinch in dark, some dark olive dyed squirrel. And uh, you don't need a lot, you just want a little bit just to give it that little bit of an effect in there. And again, you're gonna brush this again, so um, you, know, you don't wanna be too generous with the collar, but you, you gotta remember you're gonna brush something out. So, a little bit of hair in there. And spin that back together again. And then we're just gonna wrap that in several turns. Come in and whip finish directly behind the bead. Block that off. And then trim away the thread. And so now before I finish, what I'm going to do is come back in with my brush, my wire brush, and pick through some of that squirrel that I've tied in and encourage it to come back and thin out a bit. And then usually before I finalise everything off, I give it a good brush with a softer brush, you know, toothbrush or something like that, or even, even a softer bit of Velcro. And just so I'm happy that I've got the effect I'm after. And that's... By and large, the fuzzle bug. That's all there is to it. It's pretty straightforward, um, easy to tie, and uh, and it's been pretty effective. This thing uh, caught me over about 30 fish the first time I took it fishing, so I was pretty happy with that. But uh, like I said, a, a good pattern, I think, um, if you end up with a lot of uh, dragonfly, damselfly nymphs in the water, um, I think it, uh, it does a really good job at targeting those species. Anyway, fuzzle bug, worth a try. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Tight lines.